Thank you. And the gentleman from Wisconsin, Mr. Grothman. Um, in your testimony, you, you spent a great deal of time talking about equity, and obviously that's a, a priority of yours. You've put a lot more money, or you're requesting a lot more money in the pursuit of equity than the baseline figures would suggest. Is that right? I, yes. Okay. Um, one of the things that I kind of wonder about as a practical matter how it works out, and I've talked to employers about this, um, you, you enforce affirmative action requirements against federal contractors. And that results in employers hiring people maybe differently than they would otherwise. Um, I have a general question. Does this result in non-citizens being able to check the box and get preferences, and does it result in illegal people, or people who are not legally being able to get preference in uh, federal contractors? How, well, how are those handled by an employer? I don't believe that uh, somebody who is um, an undocumented citizen has the ability to access those jobs. Uh, we, unless it's a, an H-2 program, where we raise the capital H2A, H2B visa programs. Are, are That's you, a different story. Do you enforce it? Pardon me? Do you enforce it? I mean, we all know right now, I've actually talked to an employer, um, that many people who are here not legally are being employed. And I wondered whether, uh, and some people who are legally, right? I mean, there are certain people who are legally who are, who are getting employed. And I wondered, for the purposes of filling out the forms uh, that are required for federal contractors, if people who are not citizens but members of favored groups are getting jobs ahead of citizens. In federal contracting, you're talking about? Correct. Yeah, no, I mean, we do not enforce the law at the Department of Labor on that. That's, that's it, Homeland Security that enforces the law. No, I'm not but, talking about Homeland Security. I'm talking about... But I'm telling you the answer is Homeland Security. We don't do the enforcement there. Home, DHS does. So if somebody were to fill out a form and check the box and they were, they were not... They didn't have a Social Security number... No, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking when somebody comes in either, with a, either illegally and have a phony Social Security number or are here legally but are a non-citizen... Yeah, they don't work on those jobs, and, and that's enforced by DHS. If DHS was to find that out, the, the no, employer no. is responsible to make sure that they're, they're employees. You, you don't understand the question. I don't. Okay. There are people here, many people who are non-citizens who work legally. Okay. There are other people who are here not legally but get phony Social Security numbers and work for big companies that do business with the government. And the question is, when these companies fill out the forms and somebody is a member of a favored group. What does that mean, favored group? Can you just describe that to me? Well, for the purpose, for equity purposes, right? You, you talked a lot about equity, and one of the reasons we, one of the ways you get to what you would consider equity is through the Office of Federal Con Contract Compliance Programs, yeah. which are your programs. And every employee, the employer must fill out a form putting that employee somewhere on the form. Now, if I am either here illegally and have a wrong Social Security number, which is very common, you, I hope you know that, or if you are here legally, somewhere you're going to have to appear on that form yeah. for the purposes of reaching what you would describe as equity. I don't I'm asking you what becomes of those people on the form. Let me just clarify something. I don't think I would describe uh, a person of color um, in our country as, as uh, favorable. When we, when we do equity programs, it's to make sure that we have equity in our hiring to make sure that a woman of color, a man of color, somebody who's here, work, who's, who's a citizen in this country, has access to jobs that, quite honestly, historically have been shut out for right, and I, in the I just past. ask you what happens to non-citizens who are working for DHS. It's resp DHS, Homeland Security. No, no, no. I'm talking about people who are here legally or people who, which is very common. You're not listening to me. Social Security numbers. If, if somebody fills out a document with a fake social security number, that's what you said to me, and on a contracted, on a contract and gets employment in the United States of America, that is the responsibility of Department of Homeland Security to follow up on that. We have some compliance officers. We, will pro we would work with Homeland Security, but I don't think that's a big issue. Well, and I'll ask you just to clarify, because I don't think you're, you're getting what I'm getting at here. 
if you are here legally, and there are people here legally working for 40 years. Yeah, my mother was, was an immigrant in this country that had a green card. So she was here, she was a documented immigrant before she became a United States citizen. Correct. And the question is, in somebody like that, where do they wind up with on the, on the government form? Are, are they, are we, as a practical matter, giving them preference or people here illegally getting I actually will get back to you on, let, let, me, let me find out from my Office of Federal Contract and Compliance and get back to you on that, that quick answer. Okay. Um, the next question I have. The gentleman's. Uh, we're, okay. Okay, thank you. Okay. The gentleman's time has expired.